What's going on guys? So because quite a few of you were really curious to know how Natasha Romanoff came back from the dead, I figured why not? Do a quick video, let's talk about it. Because going through the comments of the Punisher War Machine video, a lot of people were scratching their heads about this. And I think I understand why for the most part. Because after Secret Empire, we were just hit with Marvel Legacy, with Infinity Countdown and the new Infinity War issues, and a number of other big good series going on at the same time, like Thanos Wins, The Hunt for Wolverine, The War of Realms, just to name a few. But with that, I feel like the thing is with so much popping off at the same time, and a lot of these new events are picking up off of the tail end of previous events. But with that being the case, and because Marvel Legacy wants to keep some type of momentum of continuity, when these huge events take place and we get the Punisher in the War Machine armor, and Infinity Countdown is probably the most guilty of this thus far, but when these huge events take place and we look up and we see Black Widow, who is supposed to be dead from Secret Empire, and we see Rhodey come back in that same story, who also died but back in Civil War 2, in the Punisher series, like that was a back to back, wait what, 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 what? <laughs> but I feel like a lot of that really goes to the huger events or the more popular issues just outshining the smaller issues that really have the explanation in between of why. Because when you walk into a comic shop and you see Punisher with the war machine armor, you're not looking any further, you're just like, I want that. <laughs> and it and it makes sense because the launch of Marvel Legacy is a, a new launch, a new beginning for new readers. And for that reason, starting with the one shot and for all the issues that come out with that title, Marvel Legacy, they're designed to come out explosive and catch your attention. Because once again, the purpose and the focus is to get new readers. But at the same time, that's why in the Punisher War Machine video, I wanted to dig a little bit deeper and explain how Rhodey returned. And for this one, we're going to do the exact same for Black Widow. So now with Black Widow, with Natasha Romanoff, her death and resurrection, if you will, and you'll know why I said it like that in just a minute. But her story, it starts in Secret Empire, then it goes into Secret Empire Omega the one shot, then from there Tales of Suspense, and it goes into Punisher, Punisher War Machine, but it's hard to say whether it crosses into the Hunt for Wolverine yet because that's not finished yet at the time of this video. But when she came back, Wolverine did drop a space stone in her toilet, but we'll get to that. But then the last stop will be like your Infinity Countdown, then Infinity War. And I know that's a lot to take in, but for this video, I'm mainly gonna focus on her death and mostly her resurrection and how that kind of went about. So now, for her death happening in Secret Empire, we're visiting this again when we go into Secret Empire Omega, the one shot. And Secret Empire Omega, it really just was, uh, it served the purpose of just telling you what was the aftermath of Secret Empire by showing us Hydra Supreme evil Steve Rogers after the event and us seeing him locked up in Shadow Pillar, the Black Side prison, as a result of breaking every law that could be broken, including murder. But in Secret Empire Omega, we're also given a lot of foreshadowing, pointing towards Bucky Barnes and pointing towards Hawkeye, and much of which that would be expounded upon in Tales of Suspense. Because in that series, we really got to see the reaction of Clint and the reaction of Bucky to the death of Natasha Romanoff. And their reactions were drastically different because for Clint, it was tough. He was devastated. And at her funeral, like he broke down. And the difference between their reaction or more so the way that they express their emotion, it's really a testament to their individual history with Natasha. Because for Clint, aside from working with Natasha, from his perspective, she was like a quixotic ex-girlfriend. And even going back to where they first met in Tales of Suspense, volume one, issue number 57, like from day one, Clint has been stricken by her. And even when she was a Russian spy at the time, and for Clint at the time, he was kind of doing this circus slash vigilante thing. But when they first met, Widow was like, okay, Iron Man is in my way. And Clint was like, say no more. <laughs> like she had him wrapped around her finger from day one. And he allied with her like on day one of becoming Hawkeye. And right after stopping a robbery, he was running from the scene and Black Widow just pulled up and was like, get in. And for much of their history, that's been their relationship. He was infatuated by her, cared deeply for her, and she was like, okay, cool. <laughs> but for Bucky, it's a much different story because they were together, together. And he didn't attend her funeral because he still believed that she was alive out there somewhere. And their history, 
I won't dive too deep into for this video because I did another video about it when I talked about all the things in the MCU that are showing how they're turning Bucky Barnes into the next Captain America. And I'll just leave a link down in the description for that because in that video, I spend more time going much deeper into their history. But for Bucky, hearing about Natasha's death, for him, it was more so of a red flag because he believed it to be a conspiracy more than anything else. And that goes in part with some denial and also some of him knowing that he helped train her and even after she was gone, many of her enemies were being taken out with her style of execution. And for that reason, instead of mourning, he set out to track her down and hopefully catch her much before or in the act of one of her assassinations. But overall, seeing the pattern of her work continue immediately after Secret Empire, this led Bucky on the hunt for Natasha Romanoff, if you will. And that's what leads us into 2018's Tales of Suspense which in my opinion is a very appropriate title for this narrative, with it bringing Widow back in the same series she first appeared in, and expanding on the narrative between her and Hawkeye, who also appeared in Tales of Suspense like three issues later. And that just feels right for this story. So now, at this point, Clint, he's also noticed the similarity between these different targets. And for that reason, he's been following Peter Anton from the US Embassy, who's undercover Hydra, because he believes Anton is Natasha's next target. And when an explosion takes place across the street from the embassy, Clint knows like, okay, yeah, this is it. Knowing that that's Natasha's style of a distraction to clear out the target area. So he starts to scuffle with the SWAT team, so they'll pretty much take him in and walk him to the truck, which is much closer to the building, and it works. But he sees Natasha silhouette running across the top of the building and because of that he speeds up the process gets himself free because he knows Peter has very little time and so when Clint gets up to Peter's office Peter recognizes Clint because he thinks Clint is there to kill him and it's funny because you can tell Natasha's death has thrown Clint off his game because when Clint found Peter at a funeral of one of his colleagues the funeral kind of reminded him of Natasha he'd been drinking at the funeral he introduced himself to Peter with his first name fake last name and absolutely blew his cover by walking away from Peter and saying hell I try. <laughs> whispering hail hydra in his ear just not being covert at all and as a result he barely made it out of there so now with him coming through peter's window peter just spilling all the beans admitting that he was formerly hydra but this is cut short by the entry of bucky barnes who attacks hawkeye because he believes at this point that it's hawkeye killing all the targets and it just goes to show that after chasing Natasha for so long that bucky his hope has grown weary because when he arrives here he's recently come into grips that okay Natasha's gone, I just need to figure this out. But Bucky is given a little bit of hope here because he finds Widow's calling card that she's always carried since the Soviet assassin program, which is like your Widow logo. And for Bucky, his is the star, like everyone else's is different and unique. But when Bucky sees this, he knows that that means the job is done. So he grabs Hawkeye, jumps from the window, and sure enough, the office blows up seconds later. Unfortunately enough with Anton in it, but there wasn't enough time to explain and just walk everybody out of there. But because Bucky identified Widow's calling card from here forward this pulled Bucky and Clint into a situation where they needed to work together and figure out what was going on and I love seeing the interaction between these two because they're so different like for example Bucky he eats healthy so he's trying to get Clint to eat these healthy sandwiches and Clinton's like yo this is disgusting like I bet you this is what man thing tastes like and it's hilarious because it's like let me find out you out here eating man thing <laughs> <laughs> that is just wrong on so many levels. <laughs> but I love seeing these two work together trying to figure this out because even though they're both now on the same path, they still have two absolutely different perspectives with Bucky believing it to be an imposter and Clint at this point having his hope refueled and making a full 180 believing that Natasha is still out there somewhere. And so to get a little further, Bucky calls in for some help by reaching out to Agent Sally Blevins, a former teammate of Natasha. And when Clint sees her, he's like, oh, I know her, that's Boom Boom. <laughs> Which it's not, but it's funny to get that X-Force slash Exterminators reference. But it's funny because Clint kind of holds on to that. He's like, that was her. But what she ends up doing is giving them a reference to Natasha's possible next target. But just seconds after getting this tip from her, her car explodes and goes off the bridge. And immediately after they go down to investigate because Bucky doesn't believe she's dead. And Clint's like, oh yeah, her car just blew up fell thousands of feet into the freezing river, sank to the bottom, and she's fine. Because that's only three ways she could have died individually, all happening at the same time. But when they go down to investigate, Hawkeye sees Widow in the crowd, and he's like, be cool, five o'clock. And Bucky turns his whole body looking over there. <laughs> and Clint's like, is that you being cool? Like, how did you ever get the drop on anybody? Ever. <laughs> but they chase after her, and she gets away. 
once again coming close but not quite close enough. And with her trail going cold once again, they just gotta go with what they got. And at the time being, all they got is the name and address of the next target, which they were given from Agent Blevins. And over the course of time that they're just watching this guy waiting for something to happen and just hoping that he's next on the list, eventually they spot her again and they move in. But it's interesting because Bucky says what most people are thinking at this point, or at least what I was thinking at this point. And like, if they take their time going in to catch Widow and they're intentionally like a few seconds late, they could just let her kill these guys from Hydra and then go after her, kind of killing two birds with one stone but they don't do that. They actually engage before she reaches her target. Bucky shoots her in the leg, believing it to be an imposter, and Clint tackles her to save her because he knows Bucky is likely to go for the kill. But when they tackle her, they find out that it's Yelena Belova, the second Black Widow, who had been impersonating Natasha this whole time. And that's not even the crazy part because Clint knows her and she knows him. But this Yelena does not recognize Clint, which is weird, but she's terrified of Bucky, which is expected because she failed him and she believes he's gonna kill her as a result. But so when Bucky tells her to take them back to her place, he wants to search her things so he can find answers and hopefully dig a bit deeper into what's going on. And I'm not gonna front, like when he finds this little red book, the first thing in my mind that I'm thinking is, oh snap, this guy's about to lose it, but it's nothing like that, it's her passport. And it's strange that she was able to travel back to Russia from overseas without having a stamp on her passport. And that alone really doesn't tell her much at the moment, but it's these little things that are out of place that's painting this bigger picture one dot at a time. So essentially what they do is they just leave and they wait for her to leave her apartment and they follow her, doing this in hopes to follow her back to whoever she's working for. But when they follow her into the subway, a gunshot rings out. And of course, as a result, Bucky pulls out his gun, but then he's knocked over, causing him to drop his gun and the same person who knocked him over picked his gun up and disappeared with it. But before they came to the realization of what just happened, they realized that that first gunshot was Yelena being shot. And it's like, man, throughout this series, people are getting dropped left and right, and these guys can't even catch a break. And now their only lead whatsoever is gone. And with Yelena being killed, they know that it's not over. So what they do from here, they get a little creative and they visit Rodion Stashenko, who's a former Red Room operative who's serving like 11 years in the tomb, which is really like another super prison. But their plan is for Clint to go in here and ask him questions. And as a little bit of motivation, he points outside to the Winter Soldier and is like, this guy's come to kill you. I could help you out, but you gotta help me out. And it works because it gets him to talking. And he gives them the address of Alexander Caddy, who more recently works with the Red Room program. But when they get there, Alexander's also dead and his ledger is in the fireplace. So Bucky gets it out before it's completely incinerated. But before they leave, they notice on his body that the calling card that is left is the calling card of the Winter Soldier. Which is crazy because these two guys have been seen together, both Clint and Bucky. And now this has people believing that it's them two doing all the murders, which turns everything on its head. But when Bucky decodes Caddy's ledger and gives him the location to another safe house for Red Room agents, him and Clint go to check it out, but then they're attacked by Orphan Maker, another Red Room agent. And so now, unlike Yelena, Orphan Maker, she one, believes that they're just cleaning out Hydra and Red Room agents. Unlike Yelena, who thought that she had failed Bucky and Bucky was gonna take her out for that reason. And that's why Orphan Maker, at this point, she's like, yo, I'm not going out without a fight. But if the story hasn't told you anything else, the answer to that is actually, yes, you are. <laughs> and it's not long after they de-escalate the situation and they actually get to talk to her that she's shot in the back of the head by the actual Black Widow. All right, so this is where we start to make sense of everything because the widow here that has returned and this is still kind of trippy. So she starts to explain everything, like what she's been doing and how she is here after the events of Secret Empire. And the way this is done, the Red Room, they've had a program for some time now that has been copying the memories of their best assassins and placing them in new bodies and doing this as a precaution so they wouldn't lose some of their best assets with that mainly being Black Widow. And so now they carried this out by using Epsilon Red, who originally was a Soviet super soldier, much like Omega Red, and he used to have the tentacles that came out of his back and instead of the hands like Omega Red. And so in the older Wolverine comics, I don't recall him having like any abilities relating to telepathy. All I really remember is him being given abilities by the Russians in order to execute whatever cause. But either way, they use him to grab the latest memories out of any of their agents, pull them in and put them into these new bodies. But ultimately him being here along like a few others, they were just being used by Alexander Caddy who was doing all these different experiments. And he was also the one who led this portion of the Red Room. And at times when he chose to, he would bring them back with only parts 
parts of their memory. But when Epsilon Red was persuaded by someone else to bring Widow back with all of her memories, that's when Widow started to set this whole thing up. And because she didn't want to kill everyone in the Red Room, there was some like Agent Blevins, which she made a copy of, made the copy meet with Bucky after Bucky had called Blevins, then killed that copy so no one would look for the original. And as far as the tip that the fake Blevins gave to Bucky, that was a setup placed by Widow because that was the real her that they chased at the bottom of the bridge because she admits that she was sloppy and she had to clean up her tracks. So then once again, she placed another copy to go after this target, which is what led Clint and Bucky to run into Yelena. And when that copy of Yelena was done with her job, she just disposed of her. But then knowing that Bucky and Clint would follow her, she called the Yelena copy, told her to meet her in the subway so she can get rid of her. But this also was a setup to take Bucky's gun and frame him for Alexander Caddy's murder. And so now Caddy, he dead for real because killing him is part of the cleanup and part of her plan for getting rid of the Red Room once for all. Because once they found out that Caddy was killed, they went to Widow, of course she acts shocked, but then all of this set it up so she could say, okay, I'll take care of this. Which is crazy because when she meets them on the roof in front of the safe house for Red Room agents, she does this in order to execute the final step of her plan because she needs the senior members to believe that she has killed the Winter Soldier and Hawkeye and just asking them to fake it wouldn't sell. So she attacks Bucky because she knows Clint's not gonna shoot her. But then she breaks Hawkeye's bow takes it, walks into the safe house where she know that they'll follow her, lures them into a safe room in the safe house where Bucky's arm is broken off in the attempt to try to stop the door from shutting. And from there, Widow heads back to the Red Room facility with evidence that seemingly appears like she killed the Winter Soldier and Hawkeye. Now man, if that isn't an elaborate plan, I don't know what is because this hands-on evidence is what she needs to get the headmasters all lined up in one room at one table so she can take them out. But as far as Clint and Bucky sitting in that safe room, they eventually got out and they used the tracker placed in Clint's broken bow to find where exactly that Romanoff went. And as a result, they used that to find where she was at, which was the Red Room facility that she had went back to, to free a number of the subjects who were there and then take out the remaining members who were running the facility. But being in that safe room for so long, they had time to think about Natasha's story and kind of figure out whether it was true or not. And so when they got to the actual Red Room facility and found the original Agent Blevins, Clint was like, boom, boom, you're not dead. <laughs> but this showed them that the story checked out and they ended up helping Widow get out of there before it was all said and done. But what she ends up doing next to finally seal the deal, after all the leaders of the Red Room are taken out, she gets Epsilon Red to restore the memories of Anya and Yelena, who are two of the copies that she killed earlier in order to execute her plan. And because Epsilon can reach out and copy their memories, his brain is like a hard drive, just filled with a number of Red Room associates' memories that he can always restore at any time. And so when he restores the two of them, Natasha tells him that he is free and she just takes him out, which is cold blooded. But she knows that if he stays alive, there's a chance that anyone associated with the Red Room could come back and do so with a full recollection of everything that has happened here. But after getting everybody out, she walks back in, the building explodes, really just as a theatrical deception that she's gone for good. But in conclusion, she leaves a letter for Bucky and she leaves a letter for Clint. Now the letter for Clint, it's really just saying that she cares for him, she appreciates him going after her, but because the memory of dying has changed her, she's going on a path that she know that Clint cannot follow. But for Bucky, his letter reads a little different. And even though he seems to discard it, she asks him a question in this letter that I think at this point, we all know the answer to. Because she tells him she has an idea that she'll probably die trying, trying to do but she knows she stands a better chance with Bucky at her side. And instead of asking for a yes or no as an answer for her to help him, she's like, just meet me at the usual place. If you're there, I'll know what it is. If not, then just forget about it and don't tell Clint. And after the events of Punisher War Machine, we know the choice that Bucky made. But I gotta know what you guys think and let me know down in the comments. But I gotta know because with her memories transferring into Epsilon's mind, is this truly her coming back? Or is there a chance that she's been dead for some time and as a copy, she really doesn't know how many times she's come back? Because she remembers everything, but still, they're all just memories. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments. I really gotta know what you guys think. So now, with her coming back as well, and this is why I say with the hunt for Wolverine still going on, we don't know if she's going to land within that story or if it's going to be explained later. But in Black Widow Infinity Countdown, we find out that in Majapur, which is also where her funeral was, but we find out in Majapur that Wolverine had dropped the Infinity Stone 
the space stone he dropped it off with black widow just hiding it in her toilet and i'm assuming he just took the top off and just put put it back there but that's one of those things as we get further into the hunt for wolverine and we get more into infinity countdown and infinity war and we see the different people who are hiding different infinity stones and eventually like now all that's revealed because gamora is just going ham right now but before all of that widow had been using the space stone for some time because wolverine had trusted her to keep it safe but that will do it for this one guys let me know your thoughts down in the comments below about everything i know it was a lot jam-packed in this one but i really wanted to raise the conversation about how natasha romanoff came back has she been a copy for longer than we've known or and this one's the curveball is this the original romanoff who has been given the memories of all the other copies who have been running around meaning that it was actually a copy of romanoff who died in secret empire but let me know your thoughts in the comments and that'll do it for this one <laughs> all right later